Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R430 server memory upgrade kits and how to properly load the system. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything useful today, hit that like and smash that subscribe. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first, this is the next gen from the um, R420 server, which was part of the 12th gen. The 430 is part of the uh, Dell 13th gen uh, server line. Uh, there are two CPUs inside. It uses uh, Intel E5 2600V3 or V4 series processors, which is an LGA 2011-3 socket. Um, and that is actually one of the things I think is a, a great improvement uh, from the 420. The 420 uh, was not using the same CPUs as the 620 and the 720. It was an E5 2400 series, which was just kind of a little bit strange processor uh, with this. Uh, on the 13th gen, that's one of the improvements I, I feel like Dell has made. Uh, you're using the same processors and the same uh, modules as the 630 and the 730, uh, which I personally like from just a convenience standpoint. Uh, it makes it a lot, a lot easier if you are um, stocking different types of servers for your data center uh, to be able to just have spare parts to do just different upgrades and them actually be compatible. So um, anyhow, on that note, let's get started on the uh, the memory. Uh, there are 12 DIMM slots inside. It uses, uh, utilizes DDR4 memory. There's a number of different speeds you can use. Uh, you can go as low as uh, 2133 megahertz. Uh, you can do 2400 or you can do 2666. Uh, the problem with the uh, 2666 uh, is it's actually going to clock down to the 2400. Um, so you can use it, uh, but realistically, just know that going into it, it's, it's going to clock down. Uh, there's a couple different sizes you can use, uh, as low as 4 gig, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, or all the way up to 32 gig. No, unfortunately, you cannot use 64 gig modules with the R430. It would be really awesome if you could, but unfortunately they are not compatible. So 32 gigs is the highest that you can get. There are two types of RAM that you can use inside. You can use uh, ECC registered, also known as RDIM, or you can use load reduced memory, also known as LRDIM. Uh, with ECC registered, you can max out uh, at 384 gigabytes using 12 32 gigs at 2666 megahertz. Same thing with LRDIM, uh, 384 gigabytes, 12 by 32 gig at 2666. So uh, now that we know a little bit more about the memory, uh, let's hop inside, uh, show you the channels, uh, show you actually how you want to configure and install it. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear back, uh, grab my ESD gear because you never want to get inside a machine um, and potentially damage it. So I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from getting electrostatic discharge. First things first, you just need to make sure that your latch is set to unlock. If you, if it's not, you can literally just get a Phillips head and uh, switch it over, pop it open, and pull up the top just like any server you've really ever been in. Pretty simple, okay? Now that we are in, you will notice a couple of things here. Um, you will see that uh, here's your back plane for uh, four large form factor drives. There's actually that's something we kind of uh, skipped in the beginning. There's two types of chassis for this. There's the um, the four bay, which this is. It's a four bay large form factor, and there's also an eight bay small form factor. So depending on the storage that you're looking for, those are the different types. But anyhow, so you have your back plane. Uh, you have your hot swap uh, power supplies back here. There's dual power supplies. Uh, right here is going to be your uh, air baffle. Uh, when you pop the air baffle up, which is very simple. You're just going to lift it straight up. Uh, when you pop the air baffle up, now you will see uh, you have two uh, CPUs, uh, CPU 1, CPU 2. Uh, CPU 1 right here actually controls the eight DIMM slots here, whereas CPU 2 only actually has four uh, DIMM slots. This is important to note. Uh, that's how you get to the 12. It's a little bit different because most of the time CPU 1 and CPU 2 have the same uh, same DIMMs uh, or same number of DIMMs and control them the same. But um, on that note, uh, it's kind of important to uh, pay attention to that because um, there are actually four channels on both CPU 1 and CPU 2. Um, and this is important just for how you're going to configure the system. So let's say you are running two CPUs and you wanted to put in eight modules, for instance, okay? You're gonna wanna put them in the eight white slots, which is the start of the channel. So uh, for CPU one, that's gonna be A1 right here, A2, A3 over here, A4, and then you're gonna come over here uh, to CPU two, and then you're gonna use uh, B1, B2, B3 on the outside of B4. Uh, so that's if you were gonna load eight. Let's say you were only gonna uh, load four, then the best way to do it would be uh, in uh, A1, A2, 
A3 and A4, okay? Uh, now, personally, I recommend uh, just going ahead and maxing it out and putting in uh, 12 sticks, whether that's, you know, 12, 32 gigs or even just 12, 16 gigs for your needs. Um, I like to um, to spread it, spread it out across all the DIMMs. Uh, it's basically the whole idea here is you just want to make sure that you have a proper balance, a uh, proper load balance, because if you overload one of your memory channels, then your other memory channel is getting nothing out of it, uh, then you're not maximizing your performance. So it's just literally all about performance. Uh, so installing your modules, uh, while it's very, very easy, uh, it's important to just be safe on how you're actually configuring it and how you're installing them, because if you do it the wrong way, you could just end up uh, uh, with a, without the um, maximum performance. So anyhow, that's the start of the channels. Uh, it's with the white slot, and then the black slot is the uh, second slot. And really, the only time you're going to be using the black slots is if you're really maxing it out. So uh, that being said, I want to go and show you how to actually load these. We have some 32 gig uh, 2666 modules here. Uh, but before we do, I want to note a key thing here, a very important uh, note. Right here in the middle of this module, there is a notch, which is known as a key. Uh, this key is very important because uh, the key is not perfectly centered. Uh, it's going to be off just a little bit. Uh, so if you um, are loading your modules and you actually flip it the wrong way, you could potentially damage the leads on the module or even worse, you could damage the motherboard. So you need to pay attention to this uh, to this key and you'll notice on the motherboard itself, uh, there's a plastic notch that sticks up and that helps you determine if it should be like this or like this. And it's also important because a lot of times from CPU 1 to CPU 2, it flip flops. So it's, it's easy to just get in a good rhythm, be loading, be loading, be loading, be loading, and then all of a sudden it flips and you're not paying attention and you load it in the wrong way. So just some, some, something really simple to note uh, to be careful with. So I'm going to go ahead and start loading this up. And for us, it's going to be like this. Um, and one other thing actually I like to note, personally I like to have all the tabs open before I start loading. just makes it easier so I'm not fumbling around. Uh, with a module and potentially drop it and could potentially damage it. Uh, just some little things, little uh, uh, tips to make your life a little bit easier. So uh, this is going to be the start of channel one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and load the module in. One thing I also like to note is right now you see my hands aren't on there, the module's in there. It, it looks like it's seated. Uh, it's definitely not fully seated. Um, we run into this error a lot where a user thinks that they have uh, upgraded their modules and everything is good to go, but they have a failed uh, DIMM. And really it's not that it's a failed DIMM. More often than not, the module is just not properly seated. So watch this right here. You're gonna hear this click. You hear that click? You need to hear it on both sides. That is the uh, the tab popping into the, to the module itself. Now you know the module is actually fully seated. So simple things like this that really I don't care if you've been a you know a technician for 20 years or this is your first day on the job. Uh, anyone can can make this mistake. It's just a very easy and common mistake. So it's something we always like to point out uh, for customers just to be extra safe and be aware of. So I'm going to go ahead and finish loading these up, and we're going to fast forward right now. So just like that, in a matter of really a minute, two minutes, you can easily load up all 12 DIMM slots. Uh, it's, it's really not that hard. Like I said, um, you know, uh, uh, you could be an everyday user that just has a server at your, your office and, and really you could be able to upload or upgrade these. It's not that hard. So uh, that being said, uh, now that it is all done, one of the things I personally like to check is just make sure all the tabs in the back are fully closed. Uh, sometimes you'll find one that is kind of sticking out a little bit and that's how you know that you potentially missed a module and it's not fully seated. So you're just going to want to put the air baffle back on, drop the top back in, and just like that, you have maxed out your Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Really, it's just that easy. So, well, first off, if you made it this far, hey, we really appreciate you watching our video. Do us a favor and uh, click that subscribe. If you need any upgrades for your R430 servers, uh, we have a ton of memory here. Uh, we would love to be able to quote your team and help you out. Do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And hey, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.